Welcome to Zagreb, a regular stop on the World Judo Tour for almost 10 years. This year, Zagreb marks the beginning of a new Olympic cycle. The occasion was marked by the country's Prime Minister, Mr. Andrej Plenković, joining IGF President Mr. Marius Visa and Croatian Judo Federation President Dr. Sander Chorak to officially open the event. In July, the Olympic Games in Tokyo's Nippon Budokan saw 14 individual Olympic champions crowned, with some cementing legacies and others catapulting themselves into the limelight. The event was filled with unforgettable action, high drama and pure emotion, and it culminated in France shocking hosts Japan to be crowned the first ever mixed team Olympic champions. Nearly two months have passed, and now in Zagreb, with the IJF COVID-19 protocol still in place, the entry list nevertheless boasted some familiar faces, but was dominated by new young talent, hoping to take their chance to shine. In this programme, we'll check out all the best action, have some in-depth technical analysis in our dojo, and learn about how this Grand Prix is looking to break new ground when it comes to tackling climate change. But we start with the women's under 57 kilogram division, where the incredibly experienced London 2012 Olympic medalist Priscilla Neto of France was looking to continue where her teammates left off in Tokyo. It has been 10 years since Neto has topped a World Judo Tour podium, and standing in her way this time was Dutch young gun Pluny Cornelis. Your commentator is former world champion Neil Adams. Cornelis coming forward, opening seconds of this final. And Neto, well, very cool, calm and collected. Hurunagi! Oh, oh, she catches a cold. Cornelise came over with her big right arm there. And wow, she expected that, Neto. Here's the big right arm coming over. And Neto, while she was waiting for it. Big arm goes round the back. She uses her legs, gets the direction. And where she looks is where her opponent lands. Absolute brilliance. And Neto, wow, she scores her first Grand Prix win in 10 years. Big celebrations and that smile says it all. Dr. Sander Churak, president of the Croatian Judo Federation, will present the medal and Neto will be so happy with her first win at this level for over 10 years. At under 66 kilograms, the dynamic Moldovan Denis Fieru was looking to make his mark and was on fire all day. Fieru attacks the front leg. Osoto! Kosoto! Well, it looked like Kosoto, but he didn't need it in the end. The Osoto and then the drive onto his shoulders. What an hip on! It was almost a somersault. Veru catches the sleeve, Tantoshi! Oh, brilliantly taken. Sleeve, lapel, and then the hop through for the Tantoshi. Oh, flat on his back. Cross grip, and the entry was sublime. Now he has the sleeve. Attacks with the Kouchi. Oh, look at that then. He had his sleeve being dominated and he just flicks it across and comes in for the Taitoshi and he just rolls over onto his back. He knew exactly what he was doing and look at that face. That says it all. Russia's Abduzalilov would be his opponent in the final. He too had shown his throwing ability on his way to the gold medal matchup. But Vieru was focused, ready, and had a surprise in store. Taking his opponent to the ground and expertly turning him over, securing an Ippon scoring pin after Abduzalilov submitted to take the Zagreb Grand Prix title. But it was his incredible Taya Toshi that really caught the eye. So we asked Neil to take us through it in our dojo. Dennis Peru is one of the most exciting fighters on the world circuit at the moment at under 66 kilos. And he's got a cracking tire toshi and he gets two massive ones in Zagreb. Let's have a little look how he does it. 
The first one is from a cross grip. And what he does, he feeds this lapel into his hand here. And as this hand comes over to try and grip the lapel here, he goes over the top here and he spins across for the Tayatoshi. The second one is a little bit different. And actually, he has his sleeve being pinned. And I pin the uh, opponent's sleeve here. So both of them have the sleeve. But what Varu does is he bends the elbow up here and pops it across here. Doesn't grab hold with the lapel hand at all. He pops it across and he hits the strong hip. Now this is the funny thing about it, is that he doesn't take the leg right the way across here. It's just arm across, catches him by surprise, and then the momentum takes his opponent over. Two really different Tayatoshis, but both very effective. At under 100 kilograms, there was another big star in action. An athlete who over the last two years has proved himself to be one of the biggest and most devastating throwers on the World Judo Tour. Russian powerhouse Arman Adamian. Adamian started strongly, a huge uranagi which shook the tatami. Ippon. Next up, another powerful pickup. Adamian showing incredible strength and persistence. Then, in a high-class semi-final against former world champion Asli Gonzalez, now representing Romania, Adamian used a driving Kosoto to put himself into the final. Awaiting him was Kerbivit Garcia of Germany, a dangerous thrower who had shocked Kazan Grand Slam champion Katharina of the Netherlands earlier in the day. Could Adamian go all the way? Or would the young German produce an upset? Adamian has been on the most amazing form all day. Such a big thrower. Big arm over the back. Anything can happen from here. Now then, what's going to happen? Oh, Kosoto! Oh, now then, Ippon's been given. Kosoto, he had control of the back as well. Wow, they, well, I think they've changed that to a Wazari. Brilliant uh, first opening technique. And now, a Damian in the lead here, into the last minute. That arm's round the back again. And something's gonna happen here now, Ochigari! And what a change of direction! For the second Wazeri. Wazeri and Wazetti upon. And then Damian has taken the German apart. That was amazing stuff. That change of direction with that Ouchi Gary. He comes in for the Ouchi. And, uh, well, Kerberweight tries to counter. But the counter to the counter there. And he spins on that back leg. Changes the direction. But he keeps the back under control. Kerberweight goes flat on his back, and that man there has been on the most amazing form. What a win. The top seed at under 63 kilograms was this year's world silver medalist, Andrea Leski of Slovenia. She has long played second fiddle to her teammate, world and Olympic champion Tina Turstenyak. But Leski will be hoping to gain the ascendancy as judo starts fresh after Tokyo. She looked strong throughout the day and showed her skills with a range of different techniques. A stylish drop knee Tayatoshi, the highlight of her route to the final. She was one win away from a fourth World Tour gold. Dutch athlete Gekke Vandenberg had three World Tour medals coming into Zagreb. But could she leave with her first gold? Or would Leski once again top the podium? Well, Van der Berg fighting very, very well here. Tries for the Osoto. And Lesky, arm around the back here. This is set for the Sumigeshi. Yes, she gets the Wazari. Now, just got to get the leg out. 
Look how she sets it up there. The arms around the back, and that just sets it up for the Sumagesh. And she just takes her over. Now, the seconds tick away, and she's done it. The world silver medalist, she is the world silver medalist, comes into this event full of confidence. Right on the bell, a brilliant win, and very, very professionally done. The event in Zagreb focused heavily on sustainability and the climate. Let's now find out a little bit more. I'm Nicholas Messner. I'm the IGF Media Director and Judo for Peace Director, and I'm also involved in several development projects of the International Judo Federation. In 2020, the International Judo Federation decided to develop a sustainability policy that is applied during all IGF events. All organizers of IGF events are reporting about the sustainability strategy and policy applied during the event. The local organizing committee of the Zagreb Grand Prix really wanted to deliver a clean event. And we worked together with them to propose as much initiatives as possible that goes in the direction of preserving the environment, of saving the planet. That's why they put in place really simple measures that can be applied to everyone and be followed by everyone. I am Sanda Chorak. I am IGF EC member and president of Croatian Judo Federation. So we thought about small things that we can do. We can change how the people are recycling or not uh, the things they are using. Reducing the use of paper, uh, putting recycled boxes in the sport hall, where the plastic, the plastic cups and the paper can be separately uh, taken care of, but also to make some kind of connection with the humanitarian aspect. For example, the food, we put it in separate containers, so whatever is left of the day, we are donating it to children foster homes in, in Zagreb, and they are very grateful. So we hope that we are showing respect to the nature and respect to all those that need our help through sport, through judo. We had also, together with the organizing committee, a company that came to measure the carbon footprints of an event such as the Grand Prix here in Zagreb. And we will study precisely and professionally what is our actual carbon footprint, and then we will duplicate that to any other activities that the International Judo Federation is in charge of. We have two climate ambassadors, Sabrina Filsmoser and Flavio Canto. And this year, in 2021, we launched the Climate Champion Initiatives Challenges that all children around the world, all families can participate in. Judo is way more than a sport, and through activities, through initiatives like the one we started here in Zagreb, we believe that we can create a better society and generate a better world. IJF President Mr. Marius Visser handed out the under 48 kilogram gold medal to France's Blandine Pont. She was thrilled to win her maiden Grand Prix after an emotional battle against fellow French judoka Melanie Vieux. From lightest to heaviest female category, there was more French gold for Julia Tolofua. Your Spikers came out on top in the heaviest male category, with some dynamic judo. In the final, he overcame Romania's Simeonescu with a driving Ouchigari. A first World Tour gold for the giant Dutchman. There was more success for the Netherlands at under 78 kilograms, as Karen Stevenson was all smiles, dominating her final against Broly of Slovenia. A Wazari from a Sumigeshi, followed up with a powerful pin, meant there was another first-time Grand Prix winner in Zagreb. Neighbouring Belgium struck gold at under 52 kilograms, as Astrid Neto was brilliantly turned over by Amber Riel. The 23-year-old celebrated a first-ever World Tour medal, and it was gold. Anka Pogacnik continued the Slovenian success at under 70 kilograms taking gold four years after she last stood atop a World Tour podium. And Sam Hall ended Great Britain's long wait for a male Grand Prix champion. After an opportunistic piece of groundwork, saw him strangle his Italian opponent for a submission and the gold medal. Now we bring you five of the best Ippons from Zagreb. 
starting with some home interest, as Marco Kumrich produced this spectacular makikomi en route to under 100 kg bronze. One of two medals for Croatia in the event. In at four is Germany's Caroline Fritzer, who produced this moment of magic against her teammate Pauline Stark to claim bronze at under 57 kilograms. Kosovo's Laura Fazliu takes our number three spot. Shemanska then pushing forwards, putting her on the edge. Fazliu now, she hops off it. Oh, and she just uses the momentum to do the Uchimata. Shemanska there forces her backwards onto the edge, but she rotates and uses that power against her. And another Kosovan powerhouse wins through. Simeon Katarina produced something special to fill the number two spot. Katarina can go right and left. Holds right, sometimes just pops in the left. Left Silagi! Oh! And didn't he pop it in there? That was massive. Nothing drop about that. Look at the control on the arm there. The hips are across. And he pile drives him into the mat. Just scoots across there with the left leg. But it's all about the hips and the control of the upper part of the body. Brilliant stuff from Katarina. But under 60 kilogram silver medalist Pantano was truly deserving of our top hip on. Well, Pantano, not the biggest in the category, but uh, very explosive. Now then, oh, wow, what was that? Who said Kataguruma was dead? Look at that off the ground there, head underneath the armpit, and that was huge. Judo fans worldwide were thrilled to see the entry of one of the sport's most talented individuals at under 81 kilograms, Georgia's Tato Grigalashvili. In June of this year, he blasted his way to the world final in outrageous fashion, eventually falling agonizingly short of a world title and having to settle for silver. He was here in Zagreb to banish those demons, show the judo world what he is capable of, and get back to winning ways. Gagalashvili couldn't wait to get out here. He uh, just has been warming up with intent. Now then, what's going to happen? Oh, what an Uranagi that was. Massive opening seconds. And Grigalashvili says, what do you think about that? Grigalashvili now takes the arm off. Pierre, oh, drops Sianagi. Oh, uh, well, it's Siatoshi, wasn't it? It went downwards in projection. Drops onto his knees there, but it's the control of the upper part of the body. Grigalashvili, Koji. Likes a bit of Neuwaza as well, and uh, double lapel turn. He's on the arm! Oh, and he gets the submission, and he was straight onto the arm. That was a beautiful bit of transition there from Grigalashvili. He's just shown that he likes to go down to the ground as well. His opponent in the final was young Brazilian Guilherme Schmidt. A solid tactical display from Schmidt mostly nullified the Georgian, but Grigalashvili still managed to earn a narrow Wazari victory, cleverly countering his opponent's attack. This could be the confidence boost the Georgian needs, and with him once again standing on top of a world judo tour podium, the rest of the under 81 kilogram category has just been put on high alert. Up one weight at under 90 kilograms, there was another Georgian in fine form, Luka Maisaradze. He was hoping to emulate the success of his teammate one category below. Having made it to the final, he would face the experienced Azerbaijani Mamadli Medio. Mediev looked to be on great form. And after a huge throw against Sebastian Oldak, he showed great skill and guile to score two Wazaris against Russian star Kalmozeev. Which one of these two superb athletes 
would walk away from Zagreb with gold. Maserati, arm round the back. Mudiev, though, very cool and left-handed. Kosoto! Oh, and he couldn't stop that, could he? Mudiev there, in for the Kosoto. Great respect from these two, helps him out there, but uh, the young Georgian didn't stand a chance. That massive Kosoto there, change of direction as well. And it's the change of direction and the use of the hips and the control of the upper part of the body that absolutely floors the Georgian. The experience of Mediev then wins through in the end. His Excellency, Mr. Fakradin Gerbanov, Ambassador of the Republic of Azerbaijan in Croatia, presented Mamadli with his gold medal. His first World Tour title in over two years. And at under 73 kilograms, there was another chance for Azerbaijan to take gold. In the shape of two-time world medalist, Hidiat Haderov. Despite his impressive record, he has often been overshadowed by teammate Rustam Orijov, but now has decided it's time to step out of the shadows and in to the spotlight. And he looked to be on great form as he reached the final. Facing him there was the big throwing Moldovan, Viktor Sturpu. Sturpu showed time and time again throughout the day that he excels in close contact situations. Once he gets two hands on, it's full commitment do or die. He was going to be a dangerous opponent for Haderov in what promised to be a spectacular final between two men both looking to make a flying start on the road to Paris. A mouth-watering final. Sturpu, arm over the back there. Now then, what's going to happen here? Oh, he almost catches him there. Haiderov was going upwards in trajectory there. And big throwers, both of these. He couldn't quite get the rotation, could he? But brilliant uh, evasion there. And now Haiderov has that high lapel grip. Haiderov, big hips across. Almost, that wasn't far off. Massive Surigoshi there. Didn't have the sleeve. So doesn't get the score. Haiderov, last 17 seconds, big arm over. Something's gonna happen here. One of them's gonna go. Now they've got the belt. Change of direction. Haiderov changes his direction about five times. Oh, what a score that was. It looked like Haiderov was gonna get caught. Sturpu changes his direction. Haiderov changes his. They've both got control of the upper part of the body and the belt. And now, wow, it looked like Sturpu was gonna get it, but Haiderov just manages to use his hips in order to get that final push. He gets the final push and he lands flat on his back. Brilliant stuff there. Haiderov comes back into his favorite category, the under 73 kilos from the under 81s, and his first big tournament back, he gets gold. Some incredible judo at this competition. What a first one back after the Tokyo Olympics. So that's it from the first Grand Prix after the Olympic Games. Next up, the judo family heads to Paris for one of the most iconic events in the judo calendar, the Paris Grand Slam. We'll see you there.